Now, let me introduce you to Amar Vakil and John Clymer. Both of these gentlemen are career electronics engineers with decades of experience. They've been collaborating on a research into quantum gravity and multidimensional models of physics using computer modeling. Uh, Amar also spent several years talking with John Searle, Tom Bearden, and a few other notable figures in alt science. And he's tried to integrate and build off of some of the insights they shared with him where it's appropriate while also developing new models and new approaches to quantum gravity and propulsion. Okay, so Amar, are you with us, sir? Let me hand it over to you. Oh, uh, well, I'm just going to uh, get the PowerPoint. I think I talked to John on the other, I think John's there and I'm gonna get the PowerPoint up right now. I'll see if I can share it. Perfect, go for it, give, sir. Give me a sec. And uh, so John, when you, when you ask, say next, I'll just move to the next uh, screenshot. My background systems engineering, system science, and um, systems analysis, that sort of thing. And uh, I wanted to kind of give you a context this is a whole lot different than you guys are used to hearing, I'm sure. It's going to be uh, out there. But when we get through, hopefully you'll see how, how it might be very useful to a lot of things we're interested in doing. And um, this all, this um, technology that I've got, my Amar has, uh, started about 2000. I was working on a problem for the U.S. Navy and uh, uh, Standard Missile Three, which is a uh, uh, design to go out and knock knock down reentry vehicles, and, and um, so I developed a simulation model that that modeled the uh, the uh, the sensor, which was an inter IR sensor array. And uh, the problem they had was to detect the target and keep it within the cone of the array. Um, and so if you're very far away, you know, the target's in there, but you may not be able to identify it. And then as you get closer, yeah, you can identify it, but now it's going out of your uh, field of view. So I developed a, uh, an algorithm that, uh, uh, work on detecting the, the target as early as possible, allowing for ambiguity. And then as we got closer, uh, we got more and more accurate. And the accuracy of the, very, of the um, identifications of the various objects were used to control the guidance algorithm. So the, the most likely target was the one that you were aimed at. And this worked extremely well. And uh, in the process of doing this, we I made a discovery. And that is that the uh, sensor data that we were getting from the IR basically um, amounted to a whole bunch of measurements from the, uh, the IR uh, array. And uh, the, this amounted to what we call an n-dimensional vector of data. And what had to happen was that we had to map this data, raw data, into what I call features. Features are actually identify what's out there. And this is a classical uh, problem you have in data mining. What are you doing? Just a sec. Why are you changing the slides? No, no, I'm not done. All right. Sorry about that. Okay. I'm not, I'm not ready for that. Anyway, so what I discovered was that the feature space was a, was a, a smooth manifold embedded in a higher dimensional space. And so this got me into differential geometry and tensors and, and uh, K, K forms and, and, uh, and 
general relativity, electro, you know, electromagnetism, uh, uh, quantum, quantum field theory, mathematics involved in trying to make sense from out of all that. And it was one of these, you know, you guys are probably familiar with, you know, once you get on uh, onto something, you just keep going and going and going. Well, okay, that was great, except that when I got all through, all I had was a model of mathematics, and I, I couldn't put it all together. I couldn't integrate it. Well, I'm still working on that. Uh, right now, I'm working at Minkowski's original three papers, where apparently he attempts to do just that. Anyway, uh, that's, one, that's one thing. And then Amar and I... Uh, collaborated and we started looking at papers where there were actual experiments performed. Uh, experimenters were what I call uh, disturbing matter and it resulted in what I call um, um, some kind of energy field uh, coming out of the ether. And, and, and basically regulating whatever the change was. And, and we saw this, I don't know, we saw many, many, many papers where this was happening. Uh, the talk we just heard could possibly be one of those where um, if you create a negative resistance, you can pull energy out of the, like, all the information universe. And that's where you, where you might get extremely high Q. I mean, it would be astronomical because the energy would be coming from outside. Okay. So this is, we call this the information universe. And this talk is going to basically, as I said, exploring the kind of combine material and information research to discover uh, information universe, to discover new, new physics. And we've so far got three, four papers out there where we talk about this. Okay, go to that slide, the first slide. Okay. Okay, so the objectives. We want to, hopefully by the end of this, um, how do you understand the, fun, the fundamental thought, um, what I call intelligent adaptive concept? Um, uh, and this is system science, is where you have a network of intelligent agents. That means they're capable of adapting and learning, and they're, they're connected. And, and uh, In our, in our experiment, we're looking at the idea of a, dis, of a disturbance uh, <clears throat> of the information in the universe. Um, uh, it requires adaptive learning to control regulation. And the other thing is, uh, yeah, that Amar has uh, pointed out, is that you can uh, have a disturbance that can be very dangerous. We know of the experiments that have blown up when people tried to disturb the, some matter. And the result from the information universe was catastrophic. So that means that you need to, you've got, you've got to have some way of controlling the disturbances that you're applying to avoid a catastrophic outcome. I think that what, we, what we're going to be talking about here applies to all kinds of research that's going on right now. And I, I suspect the EM drive would just be one of them, where you might want to use something like what we're going to talk about to tune the operation of the system in order to maximize the cube. Uh, Therefore, the thrust. Okay, so this leads to the second objective, which is to understand uh, an interactive concurrent process model 
uh, which will explain the information in the universe. And this is this is based on on system science. And I've got I've written two textbooks. I've got seventy five papers on research uh, that talk about you know the evolution of this um, uh, idea. Okay. Okay. These are the main topics. Um, we want to convince you that, that the information universe actually exists. So we, we're going to present some evidence and a description of the combined information material universe uh, as a feedback control system. Uh, many authors, for instance, um, Lee Smolin, you know, has a, what is, uh, what is wrong with physics? What is it? Yeah. Trouble with physics. And Sean Carroll came out with another book where basically it's saying the same thing. And both of them have concluded there's something else. And we call it the information universe. And if the information universe is interacting with our material universe, and that it, it basically created it, it, it maintains it and, and regulates it. And we, we think, we think that the um, this combined system would probably become unstable uh, if there wasn't uh, this control going on. Okay, the second topic is I call CSS, which is oper operational evaluation modeling for context sensitive systems. And uh, I've got a simulation uh, of the information universe. Uh, I don't know what that means. Is there a net? Um, yeah, these papers, some of these papers have been peer reviewed. Uh, the ones that are in the uh, systems engineering. Uh, uh, you know, system and cybernetics and, um, and in COSI International Council on Systems Engineering and uh, uh, other other some conferences. Anyway, so the Oppen CSS simulation of the information universe. We will I'll show how uh, it is capable of doing rule learning to regulate the material universe. So basically we start off with the total chaos in the material universe. And we have a, a collection of processes that are interacting, talking to each other. And they learn the rules that basic, basically reduce the chaos down to basically uh, hydro, hydrogen uh, atoms. Okay, and of course, what that does is it it um, re reduces entropy, as you'll see. We measure entropy in, in this system, and you'll see that it, it uh, re re uh, there's quite a reduction in entropy, and we'll talk about that more. Okay, description of the quadrupole experiment. Um, this is our, our idea. Okay, we're going to try to test some of these ideas, and we've got a some software. That, we, that I've developed and Amar has developed, which we think is capable of cracking this problem. Next slide. So uh, let's go. Next slide. Okay. Let's see. I like it. Right in the middle of my slide. This is all new to me. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm probably messing this up, but I, I, I'm trying, very trying, right? Um, okay. So we, next, we're going to talk about um, the, 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 the IU actually exists, and uh, the basically the research that we've uncovered indicates 
that inf information un universe uh, creates energy fields of some kind to regulate disturbances in the material universe. And these, these experiments have revealed that you, you can see heat, electric fields, gravity, propulsion, quantum states, and these have all changed. Uh, this, this propulsion force, of course, is uh, what we were just hearing about. That the, the idea is that you can pull energy out of the information universe in the form of thrust. And of course, this is a very important thing because you know we're going to conquer space. We have to get out, be able to thrust all the way, you know, to Mars and back or wherever we're going. Um, wonderful. Peer-reviewed is bad, okay. Um, solar, okay, so examples, one of them is, uh, that's, that's true, that's true. I don't believe in it either. Okay, uh, solar cell uh, carrier multiplication is very interesting. This is Victor Klimov's work, and we had, we had an opportunity to communicate directly with him. And basically, uh, he a specific light wavelength uh, shining on, uh, uh, on, a, on a solar cell and, and give you what they call carrier multiplication. In other words, extra electrons are coming out of the information universe. And this project has vanished behind the, you know, the dark, uh, the, the dark curtain. Okay, then another one is propulsion. This is uh, Jim, and we, uh, we're very familiar with this. We actually went there and watched watch his experiment. And um, he's trying to um, do the same thing we just heard in our previous talk, and that is to produce um, pr propulsive thrust. And my impression of his work was that our, our system would be a great benefit to tune his, um, his experiment to get, get more out of it. And matter of fact, we were watching a talk where uh, they were presenting this uh, to a, was it was it I think it was the Navy. No, it was NASA. Anyway, the question was came up, you know, that you know you guys could tune this. Yeah, yes, right, NASA. Um, you guys could do something to tune this, but they uh, uh, they didn't uh, take take any action. But anyway, we think that our, our system could be used to tune that experimenter to get the maximum amount of thrust out of it. Next slide. Yeah. Okay, the, the radiate radiate reaction reduces um, entropy. Okay. Uh, and this is an, uh, another important thing. Several of our papers have looked at this. Um, entropy is a, is a measure of information content of set of messages in a system. And we have several simulations that show uh, that entropy is reduced. Uh, if you have regulation going on, regulation eliminates behaviors that are um, ineffective. Um, in other words, they're not, they're not uh, helping you. And then when you eliminate behaviors, you eliminate the number of messages that can occur. So the other thing is uh, we, we studied is the idea that regulated reaction is likely when matter is present. So uh, there, like, regulation can, can create what they call entropy fluctuations in the IU, in other words, entropy uh, landscapes. 
and uh, Berlendi has got had some papers on that. Uh, but the idea was that these entropy landscapes in the IU, due to regulator response to disturbances, uh, appear to create energy potentials in the material universe. Uh, there, one of them being gravity. Uh, we, we also know that uh, you can get electrical fields, electromagnetic fields, you can get heat, well, you can get uh, all kinds of strange effects if you start right, right, uh, trying to uh, disturb something. Next chart. Next chart. Okay. I, I used to. Uh, the if groups do something up. Uh, we have, a, I, I created a, a way of thinking about it, uh, a model, a system, a system science model. So hopefully if you can bear with me here, this will may help us all from the, at least be able to visualize the thing. And first, the idea basically is that we have a, a, a network of communicating intelligent agents and that um, uh, these, these things exist in the, uh, in the information universe. Uh, the idea came from um, uh, uh, Lee Smolin's uh, uh, description of loop quantum gravity, where he was saying that there are energy loops below the ZPE, where um, when these things intersect, it produces loops. And these nodes basically create 3D time, 3D space, and so you you have space being a uh, uh, space elements. Uh, space is not continuous, but it's space created with discrete elements. And I and I thought, well, maybe they do more than that. Maybe they they actually regulate the material universe. Uh, maybe they create, they create, uh, they created it in the first place, and now they they re they regulate it in order so it doesn't all collapse. So I'm thinking, okay, these agents are going to share messages to determine the proper regulator action at each. At each space element, you want the regulator actions to be consistent, mutually consistent with everything that's in the, what I would call the landscape. So they would have to coordinate to do that. And then the agent, you know, the agents create, you know, they create process threats by sending messages to each other. And, um, but these uh, these threads then periodically uh, update the, uh, the the status of the whatever material is at their location, and also they uh, <clears throat> maintain space time. And um, excuse me, I got to take a drink here. Um, so they do this periodically. And so basically the, the concept is that these processes running concurrently, uh, each one is, is kind of managing one element of space and whatever's there. And they coordinate, they, they do a regulation, and then they, they all share their information in the universe, because it, everything basically transmits in zero time. Not, time does not exist there. And then they synchronize so that space time is moving in long chunks. Um, the, um, the simulation model that we, I've got shows this. So let's go to the, the next one. Okay, now this, this is probably an eye test, but basically all this is, is uh, this is Alpham CSS, 
um, these, these blocks are connected. I don't know if you're familiar with the extend sound, but anyway, each one of these little blocks um, do, you know, do something. And that their aggregate is that they create a computer simulation program. So you can you can either you can create just a regular computer program, computer programming language, or you can create a simulation of a system, you know, whatever you're, you know, whatever you want to do. Well, in this case, we're simulating the information universe. And uh, so what we what you've got here, I don't know if I can. Can everybody, can you see the pointer? Probably not. Um, the, uh, yeah, each one of those thread, yeah. Okay, I can move the pointer. Where would you like me to move it? I can, it's kind of awkward to do this. Oh, later. oh on the, um, the process thread there. Okay. Anyway, uh, this, this thread here is duplicated uh, a thousand times, just a bunch of them working together. And um, the first thing that happens, which I wish I had that damn pointer. Okay, the classifier block is where um, it, try, it tries to come up with a rule that will reduce the chaos in the system. Okay, in other words, they're trying to um, uh, move the they're trying to move the system from chaos to just uh, just um, hydrogen atoms. You can imagine at the beginning of this, you know, the universe, everything is in total chaos. Just a lot of swirly energy, quantum energy. Imagine that. Okay, now these threads are going to try to. Um, they're going to create space. They're going to create a space element, and then they're going to come up with a with a uh, regula regulation action to try to move the overall system, which is space, time, to a more ordered ordered, uh, which is we want to have lots of hydrogen atoms everywhere, and not just a, a total chaos. So the classifier then applies rules to um, try to uh, um, change its local um, state, quantum state, to uh, move in a direction of uh, getting hydrogen atoms. And at the same time, it, uh, <clears throat> The next, the next chart you can see is a reward. Okay, um, what what it? Oh, shit, is it this one? Okay. Can you put it back? Yeah, oh, hang on. There you go. Johnny can see it. No, it's, you're on slide six. Yeah, this is slide five. And what's going on here? Okay, Let's, well, hang on, hang maybe on. We're on seven. There we go. That's seven. So we're on eight now. No, you're on three. This is three. It says page eight. Back up one. Oh, this is embarrassing. Well, no, no this stress, is, this guys. Is hang on a second. Well, well what? Um, hmm. Let's see, hang on. I'm sucking it up. This it right here. You had it before. This one. Yeah. I can't control this. I'm screwed. Are you able to? Hmm. Trying to do this. This was the one where we're at right now, and. I'm going to the right, next. Leave it there. Okay, we'll leave okay. it there. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So anyway, the we have we have we the classifier picks a rule, 
change, changes the state, and then the system rewards that decision, rewards or punishment. So if the, if the rule gets you closer to the desired final state, then you get a reward. If you get further away, you get punished. And, um, and so over time, okay, thank you. Uh, over time, the, the, rules, the, the rules are being shared among all of the threads. So the, 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 the entire information universe is growing a rule base in order to turn chaos into, into, into hydrogen. And they're sharing, they're sharing their rules real, basically uh, during this current, what they call a blank. Okay, then um, once all of the, all of the threads have, have made their decision and come up with their, their response, then we go to the next phase where they all synchronize and they share rules and uh, and then we go and then it loops back and we do it again. This this model was based on um, uh, Derek Meyer, who's uh, got a lot of papers out on the information universe, and he proposed this model in a recent paper, which I have referenced in our. Paper three that we've got on research gate. Anyway, so this is his model, and you run you run this thing, and uh, if you look at the little box down here, you'll see that entropy is is uh, dropping. And um, now the, another thing that I, this is something that we discovered, which is. Probably nobody, probably nobody knows. But for this system to work, there has to be a, a disturbance. Okay. If, if there's no disturbance, then the rules converge to very simple rules that actually don't work in a chaotic environment. Okay. You, you have to keep disturbing the system so that it will learn rules that will work you know, anywhere in the universe. And I, I don't know, but I, I don't think very many people knew that or know that. It is, it is, a, it is a fundamental discovery on how this could if this is the way it works, fundamental <laughs> discovery. Anyway, so uh, let's go on. We I've kind next, of given you next slide. I'll try to do get the next slide eight. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. There you go. So this is a re, kind of a what you would take away from that all that. Um, uh, during, during each time element, the agent rule learning is instantaneously shared throughout the information universe to build a shared rule base to regulate that um, material universe. And uh, the entropy is reduced as unwant unwanted quantum states are eliminated. We saw that. If you run the model, you'll see that. In general, uh, okay, this is really interesting. Now you, in general, a network of intelligent agents. Uh, I mean, one of our papers is a traffic system model. Can be a complex adaptive system, CAS, that evolves to greater complexity and has emergent behavior. Now, think about that. This, this is important. If the information universe is a network of intelligent agent, and they communicate and they share rules, they're gonna have emergent behavior. And guess, you know, one of the things that, this is just like the human brain. 
the human brain is a network of intelligent agents and has emergent behavior. And the emergent behavior is consciousness. So it's possible if this model is right, that uh, information universe is conscious, not only intelligent, but conscious. Okay. It's an interesting little thing there to think about. Okay, next slide or? Okay, next slide. I need to move along here. Okay, um, this is this is important in that we later um, on how our system works. Um, this is the concept of features, and uh, the the classifier system. Uh, what comes into the system there would be uh, numbers, and they get converted to letters. And uh, you can see that we have features for the uh, conditions and features for the action. And you, and you can see the actions uh, are very small. We either increment or decrement or do nothing. So that the change the changes that are being made are, are incremental. And I think this is an important part of the system science here because you want, you want the system to gradually evolve. You don't want it to make some huge jump then because you know what happens when you do that in a control system, it becomes unstable, right? We don't want to. We don't want to generate instability. The system will never converge if you do that. So anyway, so that's why I set it up this way, and it works fine. Okay, but anyway, these are features. So what comes into this into this thing is our numbers, <coughs> usually integers, you know, sort of integers, and they get converted into the letters. So the rules then are symbolic. Feature one equals A, then the decision is increment, you know, one. This is, this is just an initial rule. This is not, the rules look quite different once it learns. Next slide. Okay, so there, this is features, rules. Okay, let's go to the next chart. I just want to. Next one? Okay. Sure. It's kind of. Um, um, we did some research. We have this is book called Way of Theory of Information. And uh, this is a, a model of how to deal with, I think, with the, with the interface between the information universe and the material universe. Uh, we think that this might be a way of, of uh, dealing with it. So basically, when we run this experiment, we're going to get, just like we did with, with the missile problem, we're going to get a whole bunch of measurements. Um, and these measurements have to be correlated. Uh, we have to take out the noise and get a nice clean signal. Claim meaning that the signal actually represents what the disturbance was. In other words, if you can't discriminate what the disturbance was based on the signal, you can't learn anything. So that's real important. And so a bar is going to spend a lot of time talking about that because that's critical to this whole thing. Okay, then. Then you take it, you take a time, it's a time signal, and you do a frequency transform of some kind. And this will produce the coefficients of the frequency. And these coefficients, of course, describe the signal. So, so basically, you'll get what I call an n dimensional message vector, which describes the signal we're getting from all the 
measurements. See, this is the same problem I had with the missile. Same problem. Okay, then what we have to do to learn anything, we've got to uh, randomly generate a very large sample of message vectors for a set of disturbances. In other words, we're going to do supervisory learning. We're going to generate a set of sample uh, <clears throat> samples, and, and then we're going to uh, The message is coming right in the middle of what I'm trying to say. Anyway, so we get a, we got a very large sample of these things. And um, then they have to they have to be, in other words, these are signals, then they have they have to be clustered. And we have a clustering algorithm that I've developed. And if you can't cluster, you can't learn anything. Okay, so if these samples don't discriminate unambiguously, you can't learn anything. That's a, that's a good, that's a takeaway. For, and this applies to anything you're trying to do like this. Okay, so, so we get a, we get a, a um, after we cluster and we get n-dimensional, I call them exemplar vectors. In other words, the, uh, the original message vectors are clustered into uh, what I call exemplar vectors. <coughs> but they're still n-dimensional. Okay. Then um, the next thing we do is we, we have to map these as I said before in our original problem, we had an n-dimensional vector. We have to map it into feature space. Feature space is a curved manifold embedded in the n-dimensional space. So we're going to we use a neural network. It's an evolu I call it evolutionary neural network. It's the best way to, to uh, evolutionary algorithms is the best way to learn anything, any kind of optimization problem. So you run these things through the neural network and what pops out is your features. Okay, next chart. Okay. <coughs> chart 12, need to move along here. You want me to go to this slide? Or this is the... Uh, yeah. No, that's not it. This, this was where we are. Okay. Yeah. Right here, okay. Um, <coughs> yeah, this one, this is it. Okay, the, the way this works then is we have, we have to do this iteratively. We've got to learn both the neural network and the rule, rule. So we're gonna optimize both the neural network and the rule. So we set the, the program up so it iteratively runs the, the, the exemplar into, through a neural network and then, and then it learns the rules and then it, it, gets a, uh, it gets a set of rules and then evaluates the rules according to ambiguity and um, we would like to have as few rules as possible. And so it um, it keeps doing that until, it, you know, it just, neural, that's the way neural networks work, uh, evolutionary algorithms. You, 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 you have, um, let's say you have 50 examples, 50 We've got 50 neural networks and rule sets. And um, so let's say 10 of them you keep all the time. You don't change those. And 40 of them you evolve. And so we, but we always keep 10 of the best ones. 
So every time we do this, we we sort the best ones up to the top. And uh, so this goes on for, for a while until we, we eventually get a neural network and a set of rules that unambiguously will discriminate all of those cases. And this happened on the, on the, the missile problem. We ended up with a neural network and a set of rules and it could discriminate at 100% never made a mistake. And, and then we, we actually ran flight data through the thing for firings, not simulated data, but real data. And the same thing happened. It was able to discriminate 100% in those rules. So this works. So that's good news because you might want to apply this to your problem. Okay, next chart. Next chart. Yeah. I hear. Okay. This is, this is the quadrupole. Okay, this is the quadrupole experiment. And, and um, the idea here is in the middle, we'll have a test material and we will have, we got four coil electromagnets around the around the material. Uh, the electronics provides um, high, high, high current signal to the four magnets. Okay. And, and, and I'll show you what that looks like because we have a, a mathematical model of this whole thing. And then the sensors <clears throat> are, set, are set up around the test material. And I don't, I don't know how many there'll be, but we will bring in signals which NMR will correlate and do the noise re reduction. The computer manages all this, and I'll go through what, what that does. Let's go ahead. I need to move along here. Okay, next slide. Okay. Next slide. This is the next one right here. Yeah, this is, okay, electronics. Um, so, so where the box, the electronics would be, be some kind of an oscillator and an amplifier and it'd be able to produce different um, frequencies, different levels of uh, current um, and uh, different waveforms. And I've got, a, I've got a box to do that. And then the uh, input to the thing will be from the computer telling the box which combination to, to use. So each combination of power, frequency, and waveform will define a, a specific disturbance. So we get that would be the, those three, that three dimensions will define the, what I call the disturbance space. And uh, Looking at the uh, how it's wired up, the the, the four four coils um, are are all wired so that B one and B three are in the same phase and B two and B four are the same phase, and then adjacent coils are out of phase. So what that does is you change as the you, you run a frequency, you know, some, so many hertz, uh, the field is rotating and twisting. So it per, should provide a really interesting disturbance, you know, to the material at that center. And um, next chart. Okay. Next chart. Next. Oh, this one? You want to keep yeah. going? This is the yeah, quadruple. This is the... Uh, this is a good one. Yeah. Now this is this is a, this is a mathematical model of the, <clears throat> what the uh, field field uh, looks like in terms of the, not the vector, but oh, I'll oh, go back. I didn't. I forgot to mention. Yeah. Pop it back. Okay, I just did. Uh, yeah, here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, notice we so we got the vector here. That shows the B vector field. 
and you notice the different colors um, have to do with strength, field, <coughs> field strength. Okay, go to the next go to the chart. Next chart. Next chart. Thank you. Okay, and you can see here that uh, the field strength. Back up one. There you go. It's still not. There you go. Not touch it. Okay. Play. The, you can see the B field, uh, and you can see that 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 the ones that are across from each other are at the same level, and and one's up and one's down right there. And then that this thing rotates. We have an animation in Mathematica that shows it rotating. And you watch it rotating, it's it's twisting and turning, and you know, you know, to really put a real twist on space. Maybe. <laughs> I know Evan, you know, Evan's work where he discovered that uh, with with a cartan or the Einstein cartan definition of what general relativity that you can have a, a, a twist in space time. Yeah. Anyway, so maybe we'll twist space time. Okay. Uh, go ahead. We'll go to I want to move. Next there. Okay, then the sensors, basically, as I said, There'll be some numbers. They'll be sensing different things because we expect different kinds of uh, regulator actions. So we're going to have to have sensors that pick that up. And uh, and then the other thing we'll, we'll be interested in is what is the truth? Because we're going to do reinforcement learning, so we need to know the truth. And the truth, of course, would be the the 3D vector to identify, you know, what was the disturbance? Okay. So between the, um, the, the signals we're getting from all the sensors and the 3D vector, then we have a, a n dimensional vector. And part of it is, is defining, you know, what the, uh, what the response was. Well, and part of it is what the disturbance was. All that in order to be able to do the learning. Okay, let's go ahead. We okay. We, um, so next chart. Okay. The um, so the is performing three tasks. The uh, the first task is to get that uh, large n-dimensional training set. And um, so what you do is you run, you use randomly select disturbances and you run through there and you get the, um, the, um, the signal, disturbance regulator action signal. And you, you basically save those in, a, in the memory. And then you run them all through the clustering algorithm, and then you save those. So then you have a basically now you have a training set. The reason you do this is because <clears throat> in data, you know, in data mining, you can have an astronomical number of possible uh, data points. You get a hundred thousand. You know, you run run this thing. But the learning algorithm can't handle that. So you've got to um, cluster them into what I call uh, exemplar vectors. This is a really important point. This is, this is a real important part of the data model. So if you can't cluster, you can't learn it. So anyway, we, get, we end up with this uh, training set. I call them the exemplars. And, Basically, what it is is that um, the the original uh, training set uh, will cluster around the cluster around an area. The, this book on the wave theory of information talks about that. That uh, 
these messages will tend to cluster within a certain right region depending on noise. And, and so we have the same exact problem here. So, so anyway, by, by, by running the clustering algorithm uh, and getting the, what I call the training set, it's a much, much smaller number. You know, you have, you know like you'd have 50,000 in the first set and it might go down to 1,000, which is a manageable number. Okay, next chart. Anyway, this is really important. Okay, next chart. Yep, that's uh, okay, task two. Task. Yeah. Okay, once you're once you're in task two, then it's like I said before, you uh, you go into a learning mode where you 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 take the exemplar training set and you run them one at a time through an uh, evolutionary neural network. So what you do is you evolve a neural network. Then you run all of the training set through that neural network and through the rule learning. And, you, and then when you're all done, you evaluate the, the rule set, you know, how, how good was it at, at being able to unambiguously um, identify all the, all the disturbances. And then you go back and you do it again. So we just iterate this. Um, until it converts, let's go to the next chart. Let's go on, go on to the next chart. That's three. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Okay, so then at, at this point, we've got, uh, we've evolved the neural network, and we have evolved the rule set. So now, uh, what, we, what we think is that we need to do is we think that we have to run a sequence of disturbances against the material in order to uh, unlock the uh, what, what the, the effect we want. In other words, I wouldn't expect it to happen. You know, with one it might take about ten or a hundred. You know, in a sequence. So what we're going to do is we're going to use what we call I call reinforcement, which is related to, um, um, <clears throat> excuse me, it's, it's where you can learn a sequence of, of rules. Um, you can learn, you can learn, you can basically solve a problem. You get a sequence of rules that will lead you from point A to point B. It's reinforcement learning. And um, <clears throat> one of the things we'll have to do is we'll have to make sure that when, if you get an unsafe disturbance, in other words, the temperature starts to increase towards infinity or, or it tries to fly away or, you know, other really weird things. You have to shut it off. Okay. So one of the things the computer will do is if it gets if it gets a signal that looks like it's going in the wrong direction, it'll shut shut it off. And the rules will be evaluated and they'll get they'll get uh, punished. Oh, uh, you went somewhere we didn't want to go. So everybody in the rule sequence gets punished. But if you end up somewhere where we didn't want to go, then all the rules in the sequence get rewarded. And of course, there's you know things in between. But I, this is all in my book. This works great. And uh, we, we, this will be an important part of the experiment will be to take the rules that we learn for our disturbance space and see if we can't move, move the system to where we want. Well, it might be propulsion. Maybe, maybe you're trying to get propulsion. Maybe you're trying to get an electromagnetic field. You know, and you want a current. Uh, maybe you want to reduce the weight and you want, you know, whatever it is you're trying to do. Um, 
the system will basically try to go go there. Okay, so I think that about I'm almost done here. Bye. One more next chart. Next chart. There we go. Okay. Um, why don't we skip these? I, I think we don't need this one. You want me so to let's go? It? Let's go on to your. Yeah, go go ahead. Um, That's now this is twenty two. This is twenty. Yeah, we don't. Yeah, let's skip that one. You want to discuss this one? This is this is the one. Okay, skip this one. And guys, it's it's Tim. Let me jump in really quick. So we are actually into our Q and A session, but I think it's okay. Let's let's push on and have Amar do his presentation if that works. Okay, John, you mentioned being almost done, or or did you have a little bit more that you? This is his. Have? This is one more slide. Okay. Okay. John, you want to okay, do this? Go, go to your slides. Mark, you're on. Okay, I'm on. All right.